from here and a lot of it comes from training camps in that region. Now, you, people have to be honest. If you don't want our troops to be there fighting on the ground, village by village, you have to say that what you would like are, for instance, more air drone attacks, bombing from 40,000 feet. This means, among other things, you will have far, far more civilian deaths and then we'll be blamed for that as well. I mean, at least take those deaths on your back. All right, let's hear from some members of the... We won't get through too much tonight. Uh, Neil Wright has a question. Are immediate public spending cuts the best way to ensure the UK does not fall back into a recession? Well, we've had this... Douglas Murray. No, I, I, I can't agree at all. Um, I think we don't just need tinkering with public spending cuts. We need really quite savage cuts to public spending for there to be any uh, seriousness of this or any future government. Uh, the amount of waste that this government uh, uh, already uh, uh, does, it spends millions of pounds apart from anything else advertising to us about what we should do. Uh, straight away a cut. Uh, it spends 90 million pounds on the so-called Equalities Commission. 90 million pounds cut straight there. Um, if this goes Doug, on Doug, and Doug, on. Doug, and and what is happening at the moment is that the politicians are simply not not being honest with us. We cannot keep on spending at these levels. It's no good for David Cameron to say he'll compete with Labour on NHS spending and so on. They have to be honest at some point. As it is, what is happening is that this nation is like a drunk man who instead of recognising at some point he's going to have to get a hangover, has just had the hair of the dog. At some point we are going to have to go through this hangover and spending cuts like this really are no way to... Uh, spending cuts, just ignoring them as they're doing and to have this same competition on the centre ground for all the political parties that are saying effectively the same thing. They pretend, Labour and the Conservatives pretend that there are significant differences between them, and there really are. But Ben Bradshaw says... Please. Do the revelations in the Iraq inquiry this week prove that we did indeed enter into an the illegal war? The to and fro of the Chilcot Commission, do they prove that we did indeed enter into an illegal war? Okay. Thank you very much, Douglas Murray. Um, you agree with that? Well, no. Um, it does strike me, though, when Jenny Tong talks about uh, how much she'd like to interrogate Tony Blair, uh, that she exercises a different uh, uh, scale of values in London than she would, say, when she's meeting the head of Hamas in Damascus last year and praising the head of a terrorist group so who carries out, whose organisation carries out terrorist atrocities, which are genuine uh, uh, breaches of international law, every single what uh, opportunity What about Fallujah in Iraq? Well, I'm what just... What about Fallujah, you, Douglas? You, you talk about... You talk about prosecutor, You talk about Tony Blair facing it? When you sit down with, with somebody like Khaled Mashal, you praise him. Fallujah, I did not praise him. You said... I said it, uh, I've he, got his comments here he was want. worth talking to and he was actually quite You said he likely. was shrewd, plausible we and actually talking, very likely. All right, let's get we're back, let's get back to the question. I can, I can show it to you. All right, no, one. Douglas, talking maybe, maybe, Jenny, but if maybe, get back onto maybe, let's get, uh, maybe afterwards. Is, and we need terrible. to uphold international get, law. That is my main I, I point. Jenny Tom, you've made your point. point. I wish you'd tell Karen Doug, Michelle. Douglas Murray, can you um, answer the question? The fact is that the international law debate on this is, unfortunately, a terrible red herring. Uh, the fact is that the decision on when this country and our allies go to war is not decided by international law. International law is evolving. People disagree on it. As we saw this week, even the Attorney General disagrees with himself and changes his opinions on it. That's because this is an evolving body of law. And for people who think that all we need now is to, as it were, prove the Iraq war was illegal, I just say the following things to you. The, the Kosovo intervention that saved a million ethnic Albanian lives was an illegal venture. Yeah. The Bosnian intervention by the UN yeah. was an illegal... Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone was yeah. an illegal uh, event by any of these things. Yeah. So the idea that well, all we have to do here is to say that Iraq was illegal, Tony Blair's guilty, this actually addresses none of the important points. There are all sorts of disagreements about Iraq. People like me who supported the intervention are unlikely to change our minds and many people who oppose it are unlikely to change theirs. But we should try, I think, honestly as a country to try to get beyond this debate. Try to get beyond the debate of, of, of basically vilification to the point at which people will only be happy once Tony Blair is in the dock and convicted. That isn't going to happen. Right. We should look at where Iraq is now, help Iraq now, and try to make sure if the, where there were mistakes made that they can never be made again. But the kind of rhetoric that's going round about it really is not the way to stop a repeat. Man in the second row there. You... What David Cameron says, he thinks they can. He says Tory plans for education and tackling crime are a blueprint for mending the broken society. Well, I hope yeah, he's right. Not, well, I hope he's right. But you don't think he is right. Educate, I wish. What are they doing? 
how most young people are doing in right. school. Don't, don't because get young people, okay. the figures of young people unemployed, Ben, are sky high. Douglas you Murray. cannot deny that. I think the, the answer, the swift answer to the question is, of course he was electioneering, that's his job this year. Um, and uh, we've got to be very careful as a public not to fall for the kind of procedural issues which the government and the press very often make these things into. Will the report be leaked? Will it come out? Will it not? That's actually not the issue. And as so often we're being shunted into a cul-de-sac when there is a much bigger issue. We're not just a broken society. We are a society in Britain that has been assaulted for decades now. We've been assaulted in our sense, apart from anything else, of who we are, what we are whether we have a right to be as a nation. <coughs> We've been subjected to decades of intense immigration, which has brought many, many, many benefits, many benefits and many negatives. Many benefits and many negatives. But one of the other things it has done is to assault Britain and the British people as an identity. If you look back four or five decades now, what was it that Britain uh, uh, was signified by? What was it that uh, epitomized Britain? It was institutions, uh, the monarchy, parliament, uh, the, the army, the armed forces, all of these things, all of these things have been assaulted and brought down one by one in recent years by government after government and elite after elite. What we see now in this society, which is just starting to wake up to this fact, is a government and others who are saying, we have pulled it down, can anyone help us put it back together? Okay. And what they will realize is what every small C, not big C conservative, realizes, which is that it is a lot easier to pull things down than it is to build them up. And this is going to take a long time. It isn't about one press release. It isn't even going to be about one term of a conservative government. And it certainly isn't going to be about tinkering around the edges. We are going to need a revolutionary government to sort this out. And there are none on the horizon. None on the horizon. be doing everything to conserve. That was my Absolutely. Um, but just, just to get back to the question quickly, I mean, um, the issue of uh, Freedom of Information Acts uh, and this, I mean, it, it, is, it is, I have to say, I mean, I, I have never worked in government, I've only ever watched with uh, awe, really. Um, um, you have to uh, speed up and, a bit. Uh, but, but Ben Bradshaw, uh, for him to say that FOIs oh, that are sorted out, actually all that happens with FOIs is that uh, departments get rid of emails that might be incriminating before anyone can put in an FOI or don't say anything in an email and do it around the coffee machine. Um, uh, <coughs> there, is, there are substantial uh, questions around this area and I think that it is right, I'm glad, glad, very glad I have to say that Lord Lawson has set up his think tank because there are um, very good reasons to try to put some balance back into this debate. It has got extraordinarily hysterical from the climate change uh, lobby and anything which goes this hysterical this fast should, I think, raise some question marks and uh, have some kind of at least return to normal debate. It's very interesting to my mind. The climate change lobby really don't like that. Jane Moore? Um, I just want to say very quickly, I didn't say that the Edlington parents weren't to blame. They absolutely are. Um, climate change. Uh, I would say that on this, what I hope on this particular story, I believe that there is climate change. I don't necessarily believe it's man-made or that there's anything that we can do about it. But what I do hope with this latest story is that it is now open to make a very healthy debate, that dissenters are no longer squashed, mm. that we can all talk about it openly. You can have your say, you can have your say over here. Mm. And the public can make an informed decision. And then, by the way, maybe we can rein in some of the green taxes because it's now being used as a, another tax stick to beat us with when the evidence for it is not necessarily there yet. Do you believe, Ben Bradshaw, that uh, politicians have become hysterical about climate change? Because both parties are talking about green issues in that way and climate and uh, global. No I, no, I don't. And uh, if you look at the recent survey of Conservative candidates, they put climate change at the bottom of their list of priorities. And David Cameron's having real trouble at the moment with his own party because he used this as a, as a way of detoxifying, of sort of making. But what do you say to Douglas Murray's point? That and actually, most many conservatives it. share Nigel Lawson's view. But I mean, even George Bush, in the end, uh, accepted the science of climate change. So, well, you know, oh, George no, Bush. Stop flogging that. You're here. You're here. <laughs> yeah. oh. George, no, here was a man with whom I agreed on almost nothing, and I certainly violently disagreed with him on climate change, but even at the end of his presidency, he accepted uh, the science. Now, I mean, you know, I don't just think at that point. I mean, what are you trying to say? Is that trying accepted? to show he's good by attacking very, George Bush. Are you saying he's very, very <laughs> stupid and suddenly he was very clever, or I disagreed with him on everything and suddenly I agreed? No, no, you, you were asking me if I thought politicians were getting his...
hysterical. I think what politicians have been trying to do... So George Bush... Hmm? Ben was Sorry. trying to detoxify his brand. <laughs> I think no, so. No, no. <laughs> do you, do you, do you, I'm, I'm saying that the, 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 he, he was known as the arch climate change denier of his time. It was America that stopped the world doing more sooner on climate change. And even by the end of his presidency, he accepted what Nigel Lawson right. still doesn't accept. I think our time's pretty well up. Uh, we're going to be in Coventry next week. Well, folks, we certainly hope that you enjoyed that uh, top five list. There's so many good things out there. Douglas Murray, you just have to go out there and find them, put them together, put down a top five list, then you come up with another and you go, oh, those are great. Do another top five list. Then you find another one, so that could have been a top five list. You find another one, that could have been, then you gotta basically go through all your top five lists and then say, okay, out of all these top fives, what is the top five? But that's never gonna happen, folks, because there's so much stuff out there. And to put these things together is just, uh, really nice to hear somebody put things in perspective and you know what there are certain times probably okay when maybe douglas murray's going to say some things that we don't all agree with those are probably very very few but i'm sure there's going to be things out there that could be another list things that we don't agree with with douglas murray i don't know how long that list is going to be but anyways, we enjoyed putting this together for you. Hope you enjoy it. Let us know in the comments below. Send us some of your recommendations as well. And we'll try to see if we can put together a video with some other things, links that you can send to us. In the meantime, folks, you've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I've been your host. My name is Dr. Nasser. If you haven't done so already, we'd love for you to subscribe to the channel. If you found our content to your liking, let us know, as I said, in the comments below. Share with us. And... Take a look at our other links above and below. My final thought is always, when you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. Until next time, folks, take care and stay safe.